In Hickory Lake, is it, Terry? Yeah, we're on Lake Hickory. Okay. That's the Perry's old lake. Yeah. Okay, and we have his his map here. And uh, I've got some areas circled here in red that I'm going to give Chase a copy of. So he'll be able to refer back to this. He'll be able to refer so the sun back gets to this. Yeah. He'll be able to refer okay. back to it. Yeah. And uh, he'll see exactly where we where we went today. And those are the areas I mapped yesterday with the kids. Okay. As you can see, there's a lot more, and we'll get to, we'll get to that now in the next few days. This is quite a narrow. Uh, it's it's fairly lake, narrow. It? Yeah, it's not uh, the widest section was was right here. We'll be going down into that. Okay. Uh, we haven't done anything up here yet, so I stay mostly between 127 and 321 because the water color is excellent. Down okay. There. Okay. That's great. So this will be for Chase. And then I can uh, keep an eye on that as we're going down the lake. Right, you can look at that. Is this a, uh, you say it's a, a highland or a lowland? This is a lowland type reservoir. Well, it's awful narrow on the map. Now, doesn't that indication that it's a highland or is it the There's depth too? There's a lot too? of steep shore uh, which would have a highland features. Yeah. But uh, th there's good enough structure, long ridge type structure, especially down up here toward the headwaters. Okay. That we go beyond uh, 127. Yeah. This is a little bit bigger map. Oh, yeah. Of Lake Hickory. Oh, yeah. And uh, the area that we're fishing is between Highway 127 and uh, right here where you see this H. Okay. This is where we'll be. Right and, in that uh, area. The, the, this is Buck's um, uh, map. I've just uh, transposed it onto this. Oh, yeah. It's a little easier to follow with the roads and everything. That's a fairly long lake then, isn't it? Yes, it's pretty good size. Maybe within the next couple days, we'll go to Lookout Shoals Lake. It's a small lake. If the wind kicks up, uh, it's a, a small lake just below the dam on the Catawba River. And uh, it's, it's an excellent little place to fish out of the wind. It's wide okay. enough, as you can see, and it's yeah. got some good fish in it. Lookout Shoals, so, OK. Great. What kind of I've a depth sounder do you use? I've got an LCR. Yeah. Flashers are just as good. You don't have to have an LCR. LCR, uh, oh, OK. Eagle. Yeah. Uh, flashers are just as good, but the LCR is a little better teaching tool because it draws the picture. OK. You got an awful long handled net here. Is that for uh, well, I, certain that's fish? Musky net. Musky net. That's a musky net. And if we hook a big striper, we may have to uh, use that big net. I've even got a bigger one over by Fox. <laughs> well, this ought to do. Today I can run it a little faster. You should yeah. just avoid running it real fast for long periods of time. Now, we're, we're on Hickory Lake here. You're on Lake Hickory, and, and the first place we're going to go is where we caught the fish. We're going to go to a, um, it's an island. And it has a saddle in there, a saddle of about 12 feet, mm -hmm. a little short bar, and then a saddle. Then it comes back up to six, seven feet on top, sometimes eight, depending on the water level. And we got both fish on a 250 coming up on top of it yesterday. But you say yesterday was the first day you've been on this lake? First day. So we're both. I've never been on this lake. You've never been on it, and this is my second day. So and I did some mapping ahead of time yesterday, and, and uh, mapped half the time, fished half the time. And we got two nice bass uh, All right. for the first time on it. So we're pretty happy. That's great. We're pretty, it's a little bit more calmer than what I like to see, but this lake doesn't get real rough. <laughs> it's, mm -hmm. it, it basically stays uh, as you see it, nice and smooth. Watercolor looks real oh, good. The watercolor's great. It's white sandy. It looks like about one or two foot. It disappears. Uh, oh, less than a foot. Less than a foot. All right. This has been a good color here. Okay. So we'll take those out. And uh, some brass 400s out. When in doubt, use brass, huh? Use brass. Okay. And I get this little fluorescent 500. And a little fluorescent 400. Okay. Do you think the fluorescent colors work better in this dark water, or well, is it? it, the... it uh, we caught one. We caught both fish on it yesterday. So okay. What we're going to try and do is. Uh, you see just how it's going to work. I'll take out some bigger lures later on. Just looking for. Uh, so you're going to start right with the 500s then? Yeah, after we map the bar. We're going to okay. Map the bar first. That's 
sun is nice. 90 to 95% of the time, you're going to be able to catch more bass on the cast once you locate them on the structure than you're ever going to be able to catch trolling. Continued trolling passes over them will eventually swoop the school and they'll drop off. You may catch four and lose one where you should have caught 14 and lost three. Uh, yeah. Coming out of this, this little creek right here. And it's going to merge with this one, this, uh, this creek arm over here. There's okay. a bit of an arm coming out. Okay. So we have this island right in front of us. Yeah. We're in 35 feet of water. We're not in the main channel. But with this kind of water color, 35 and 40 feet is fine. You don't have to be in the main channel. Okay. But it, it helps the fishes down. Take a look at it. You see it coming up. This is where we caught the fish yesterday. You see it coming up. Yeah. I think I'm going to follow it along okay. here. It's about 11 feet on the top. Shallower in there, you're going to see 6 feet if you were to go in any closer than this. Uh -huh. You see 6 feet. Oh, yeah. Now it's going back down. It's dropping off real good into this creek channel over here. Look at that thing drop off. Where's the break on that? Is that? It's about 12 feet. About 12 feet. Okay. Right down to about 31. With this water color, that's fine. And this is the bar over it's here. Everything the fish need. When you're looking for largemouth bass, you've got to have a structure that goes all the way from the shallows out to the deep water. It can't be an underwater hump that's 25 feet deep, unless the fish have a path to the shallows. A mm -hmm. school of bass will not be there unless they can spawn. Okay. They have to have the spawn. This structure situation has everything the bass need. Yeah, it's got everything the spawning bay need. and the cove and the, and the deep structure. Everything they need. And that's why they're here. Now, the main channel is over there. You can see the steep shore on the opposite side. Yeah. It's way up on the hill. That's not that far away either, is it? It's not that far away, but we've got 35, 42 feet right out here. Mm -hmm. And we got a drop off, which, which Hamill would love. <laughs> Leave this on. It's got 42 feet going into the channel. Uh, you started the drop off. I started in the shallows. And uh, people say, well, that school of big fish isn't in the shallows. I says, no, that school of big fish isn't in the shallows. But there might be one big fish in the shallows, especially this time of the year. And I want to make sure I don't miss that guy. If he's up there, I'm going to get him. OK, we're going over the real shallow areas, right? Yeah, we're over the 500 now. We're at two to four feet of water, dropping to five. The water temperature is what, 57, 57 degrees? 57 degrees. Yesterday it was 55. Okay. So it may get up to 60 today at one time or another. So there's a lot of trash what, in the shallow areas trash, and yeah. all over from the storms. Uh, what are the bottom conditions on this lake? Uh, it's hard and clean with a little bit of moss. Okay. Not too much uh, stumps or things like that? There's stumps, but the hangs aren't so bad here. Not so bad at all. You're making a second pass with a 500. It's the second pass with a 500, yeah. Going back over. I'm varying the speed anywhere from two and a half miles an hour to about four and a half. Okay. With that water temperature, it's not going to be like the middle of summer. Yeah. Especially at this time of the year, the shallows. So you have to tick, tick it or feel it. You want to tick it. You want to rattle something that, down there. Even more so than in the warm weather? Even more so. Yeah, in the warm weather, they have a tendency to perhaps I think the lure's running free a little bit better in the shallows. Ah. But at uh, this time of the year, you're better off to just, just take the bottom. Or is that uh, kind of make for a harder bottom? or a... Oh, yeah, that makes a hard, clean bottom. And that's what's downstairs. OK. Now, I notice you're coming all the way down on the point, quite a ways from the point. So you're just trying yeah, to cover all the spawning? the shallows for quite a distance here. Okay, because it is spawning uh, pre-spawn season? Right, right. I might not come this far on a short bar like that at a, at the, you know, during the summer. In the summer, I see. So now we're going to a 400. Yeah, back, we're going to be four to six feet deep now. Back on the same structure? Same stuff all the way around. A couple times? Or uh, yeah, a couple times. A couple times. So there are little points that stick out from here, and you're little noticing fingers, those. Little fingers that stick out. Drop to seven, six, seven feet on either side of them. A little 
the short bars. There's a fish around, that's where he's going to be. Sometimes, yeah, and the, as they're moving up uh, along the side of the bar, then they'll pick right. those up. So most people really don't take the small lures seriously. No, they don't. No, they don't. But you're, gonna, you're learning a lot of information now, aren't you, about the structure? I'm learning a lot about it. It's telling me what the bottom is like. It's telling me if there's any grass. It's telling me if there's any moss. Mm -hmm. Moss is, is tough to fish in as weeds. The lure keeps, anytime you can't work the bottom, it makes for a tough situation. Fish won't always take the lure running free. There's a little bit of a moss problem in here once in a while, but we didn't have much trouble with it yesterday, so I don't anticipate much trouble with it today. So this has a saddle on it from the point. It comes out, drops down, then comes down, back up again? It drops down, it comes back up again, it drops up in the deep water. So now that hump then uh, out on the end of it ought to be uh, something to really fish. It is. That's where the fish, the fish were on top of the hump yesterday. From this direction now, I'm going to hit it right about five feet. And you're going to you're going to run the boat a little bit deeper and re let a little more line out. Well, no, we're going to come in a little shallower. A little shallower. Than we did last time. On this run, okay. Right. Last time we hit it right at about five and a half, six feet. This time we're going to hit it a little shallower. A little shallower. Work the bottom when we can. We're going to run about 25 yards of line, okay? Okay. With a two, 250. 250. Okay, so you can run that color to the water, that second color. Okay, sounds good. Now, I noticed you're fishing this side uh, more than the other side just because this is a better break where they would move up on? There's more structure on this side. Yeah, more deep water okay. on this side. So you're covering this a little more thoroughly. Right. So short and right to the point. They're short movements, so you got to be there right at the right time. Gotta be there at the right time. Because of the seasonal aspect it's of it? season. Okay. And to let the color go right to the water, so you're getting that about two... about 25 yards. About 25 yards. Okay. 25 so, to 30 yards instead of that, um, uh, instead of that, that the short line. The, the, just the straight two. So you're yeah, working about is, two and a third? This is 17 pound line. Okay. 17, okay. This is 17 your lures and then you turn the boat around rather than make a wide sweep. Yeah, so I can get my line sights lined up and I can make a better trolling ah, that way. okay. Some people say you don't have enough line out then, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I always get enough line out or I use a bigger lure. <laughs> the main thing is the line sights. The line sights. Yeah. So you're taking line sights as you're doing this? Yes, I am. Definitely. Now we're bouncing across the top of this underwater across island? Across the top of it, yeah. And you can see how we're going to come off right here. Oh, yeah. I noticed you're, uh, you always slow down when you start bouncing bottom. Yeah, I wanted to tip the bottom and walk the bottom rather than... Uh, here's something we got to take a picture of, the boat over here. You're kidding, he's going to put some more trees oh, in look the... look what he's dragging behind the boat. Chicken reel in, Chase. <laughs> We'd probably anchor and cast. We wouldn't leave this spot without casting. That's okay. for sure. You've made already about, what, 10 or 12 passes on this bar? With different lures, With, yeah. And you're just still on the 250s? Yeah. Uh, that's covering it pretty thoroughly. Well, you have to. Say everybody's in a hurry? Everybody gets to be in too much of a hurry. They yeah. want to get a lure over the side, and they want to fish, and they don't have anything to fish. They don't even know where they're at. Consequently, they'll hit a big bass. By the time the wind blows them away, and they land the fish, they have absolutely no idea where it came from and absolutely no idea what the structure situation yeah. is. Or if they would have mapped it first, put markers out if they needed to, well, then they would have had a good chance fish to more, get into that school. More Why people don't catch them uh, casting? Yeah, they say, it doesn't work for me. I never get into them casting. I can catch them trolling. And they don't realize they never get in the right spot. They don't map the bar thoroughly enough. Their interpretation isn't good. Mm -hmm. And as I said, if they don't put markers out, if they just try and contour everything and not make straight line passes, they have no idea where that fish but, came from. Right. They have no idea where to anchor the boat. Yeah. They're gaudy looking. <laughs> now you got, you're getting some 200s and 100s yeah, out? Yeah, 200s out, 100s out. Yellow should be pretty good here too. Mm -hmm. Yellow's a neutral. Well, it's just a brass. The uh, cloud, or cloud conditions, it's kind of semi-cloudy. Yeah, so, it's, still, it's still got some light. But it's not We're bright, not so, you, so you might go to no, a neutral color now. Huh? Exactly. We've been running neutral colors right along. Okay. 
basically for something they can see? Yeah, we don't know what the, what uh, what they can see best in this dark water. Maybe it would even be a copper. We don't know yet, but if we come across some fish, we won't have the wrong color on it. Mm -hmm. We might be able, by experience, experimenting, we might find out that the color preference isn't what the fish prefer. It's what they can see the best in this water color with this kind of light condition. And that changes. Uh, yeah, and we don't exactly know what that is yet. OK. But you are using about the same length of line for most of your passes. Is that yeah, I, correct? Yeah, I know, I know about how deep the lure should be going. OK. And that's what I'm concentrating And you like to work with a little shorter line? A little shorter line. I got better control. If I'm not getting deep enough, I'll go to a bigger lure. OK. Well, now we've got the uh, 200 on. You hit you hit the end point. Now you're going on the one point on the side. I'm coming over here to the side of it to make sure there's no fish over here. You're going to hit that one point that you found that stuck out the most right. on that. So, yeah, okay. we're on it right now. Grab the rod up here, pick it up over your head. And, and really on. jerk on Rip it. Rip it right out or lift it over. Especially with uh, wood type snags. Right. Along and you hook into uh, wood. You, you pull harder and you rip, raise your you rod tip. You rip right through it and raise your rod tip, either make it hop over it or rip right through it. Most people get discouraged with reservoirs because of that. They've never treated their fishing tackle that rough before. And that's why you use the heavy tackle, too. This is why we have a class, one of our classes is on being properly rigged. This mm -hmm. is what we mean by properly rigged. Yeah. I'm using it, anything on the opposite shore. As oh. I put on a bigger lure, I'm coming out further okay. and further and further. So there's a house simply, over there. Yeah, just simply using that. Uh, each one you come, you grab another uh, point on the shoreline and exactly. and run it across. OK, so that's fairly simple. Real simple. Too much out of this. They're making it too difficult. It's not that hard. If they would just stick to the basics and read the book, uh -huh. how can someone say they read the book and they're a spoon plugger when they don't have a lure, uh, they don't have a 500, 400, or 250. They don't know you even own one. Yeah. You're not a spoon plugger. You're a guy that drags spoon plugs around behind the boat in the water. Uh -huh. Which says something for the lure itself. <laughs> it catches a lot of fish. And taking line sights really isn't that big a deal. And a lot of guys make no, a lot of... it's very simple. They make it a real complicated yeah. process. Okay. And it's not. It's a very simple thing. If they would just sit down and read. For instance, you say to someone, Say, did you read the green book? And the guy said, yeah. I have a fellow back in the in the complex. He's a manager in the complex. And we gave, Buck was here with me when I rented the apartment for my family. And we gave the guy a green book. And when I talked to the guy just a couple weeks ago, I asked him, did you, did you uh, read the whole book? And he says, yeah, I did. He says, but I like to catch my fish casting. <laughs> I said, did you read the, 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 uh, the part about casting in there? Did you read that chapter? part about casting with jump type lures and spoon plugs and everything. He says, no, I didn't see that. <laughs> he didn't see that, but he read it from cover so you're to right cover. 100? We're working with the 100. We're hitting it right at the break line now, right at the drop off, you're, right at 12 feet. You're doing a pattern uh, trolling? I'm, gonna, I'm doing a straight line pass. I'm coming right down the side of it as it hits here and it sticks out into that cold. I'm coming right down the side of it. Okay. So if you if you caught a fish, you throw a marker right towards the right shore. Towards the shore, right up on the bar. On the bar. And we would know that the fish came from 30, 25 to 30 yards behind us. And then then you'd uh, go back and anchor uh, at the marker over over no, to the I'm other not side at of the it. marker. No, I would interpret what was between the marker and my lure. Okay. Because that's where he came from. Mm -hmm. right? Okay. Okay. Well, let me make it turn to the outside because you got the camera. Oh, okay. Okay. You turn to the outside, you would put your line right there against the boat. Okay. As I turn this way, I'm going to reel mine in. Steering with my elbow. I can make a real sharp turn this way. Oh. Much sharper than trying to make a wide sweep. Okay. Turn. And then you have to wait for a few seconds before I'll, you let I'll yours out. It. I'll wait for your line to straighten out. If I see your line straight now, then I can let it Okay, out. yeah. Well, we're going to hit that once more with the 100. I'm going to hit it both directions with the 100. And then you say there, uh, you follow that brake line out on the side. It swings too. way out. It's got a little hump on the end of it out there, too. So you're going to hit that, and then... Hit that, too. Then, uh, at that point, you've covered down to 14, 15 feet? 
cover down to about 14 Four. feet. I'm beyond the drop off at 12 feet. I haven't hit a fish. I'm not going to anchor and cast if I haven't hit a fish. Yeah, okay. Keep on going. Keep on. If so this was an established spot that I knew exactly where to put the boat, I wouldn't even be trolling over it. I'd anchor and cast. Okay. So then after we finish this, we're just going to move on to another Let's structure. Move on to another spot. Something you thought might have been a fish, so you might have been a fish, and it might have been another tree because the trees had us jumping over here. Okay, but you're going to make another pass just to make sure. Make another pass just to make sure. Okay. That's this other finger now, but you have yeah, a line sight. Start on. swinging out on it. Okay. You got a line sight on every every single every, pass that every, you make. Every straight line trolling pass. The uh, the contouring lures, you know, the small lures. I just contour troll those. This is from a lot of different directions? Four or five different directions. Those are the straight line passes. If I try to contour troll this thing, if I try to contour troll this thing, I'm never going to make a straight line pass. I'm never going to hit it. I'm mm -hmm. either going to be too shallow or too deep. Yeah. With the line sights, yeah, I'm making straight line passes. You're covering it thoroughly. All the way. The thing for us to do would be to put a 500 on right away, unless we were going to troll our way over there. Uh -huh. But. We want to go over there, let's say we haven't been there yet, but some but Buck told us that's a good area over there. Mm -hmm. We want to go map it first. If we put a 500 on, leaving this spot, we'll start fishing right away. Now what Buck likes to do, he'll put a 500 on and he'll troll over there. Uh -huh. That's fine if you want to do that. Especially on a new lake. Exactly. But when he gets there, he'll put the rod down the boat and map it. Okay. Okay. And he's, he's already told us where the fish are. Exactly. So we're going to go over there and we're going to take a look at it. Okay. Oh, yeah. Can't fish down there? Yeah. Now, so this bridge, now, when would you fish this bridge type situation? Probably in a real cold weather. Real cold weather because it's, it's right in the channel. Okay. 50 feet deep, right in the channel. Yeah. But, but I'd but still get on the sloping part. I'd move the, toward the shore. The probably fish off this one. On in. The steeper. Yeah. And then uh, and work that right vertical or would you? Vertical jig it mostly. Yeah. Mostly. Okay. But I'd still be able to cast yes. like a jump spoon. Yeah. You know, if I had. Okay. Right here in the springtime. Right. Because of the steep. Because of the rock, then it's so nice and steep, deep water. That pier might be good fishing. 21 feet, 25 feet of water right outside there. Okay. Pier. All right now, right here. See how I start in the deep water? Well, you're going to map something. You can't start in the shallows. you got to start in the deep water. Mm -hmm. well, I'm going to see what I come up on here. I'm going to see if anything happens. Already it's starting to come up. It's starting to swing out. I just swing out with it. See what I mean? So are you following the, you're following the Look brake line? Drop. Oh, Look yeah. Drop. See what I mean? Yeah. There's a little finger right there. Turn the corner and come down in here. Look at this, Chase. Up it comes again. Right out at 25 feet of water. Up oh, it yeah. comes again. Look at this. Eight feet on the top. Eight feet on the top. So you've established that there is a bar. Now it's seven feet. I'm going to go out further and see what happens out here. Here it's going down again. It's dropping off again. There's a finger there, too sloped again. I'm going to cut back in here. There's a little creek arm coming out of here. This is oh, the yeah. creek channel. We're in it right now. We're See? right in the creek feet. channel. That's one side of it. It's got some structure. Over here has got to be the other side of it, huh? Okay. Oh, yeah. That point there? Here. I'm saying this has got to be the other side of it because I can see it sticking out. Mm-hmm. Okay? Uh, any dummy could. Here's a marker boy that says danger. That means there's shallow water between there and the point, and I'm at 30 feet of water. Yeah. Now look what's happening. Look what's happening here. Here's the bar. See where we're going? Yeah. yeah. Going up. So we can hit this one. Cut across the deep stuff. So you're basically you're working a creek channel down to the main channel? Well, the creek channel comes in the main channel. Here's the brake line, 18 feet. 
Okay. 17, 18 feet going right in the channel. See it? Yeah, yeah. That's the brake line. Oh, yeah. That's the brake line. There's the creek arm. It is, Jason. You're it's going to go off the side. It's rolling a little flat there. You okay. know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Let's see what happens as we go further into the creek. We're going in the creek channel. Yeah. There it is, right at 10 feet. Right down it went. See it? Yeah. Okay. Now I'm heading to this side. We're going to the other side. 27 feet. You saw it come off a of 10 right there. Now so coming up. This is, we're in the creek channel now. Yeah. 30 feet. Look at the shore behind. Oh yeah. Coming up on the other side. No 30 feet. Right up to 17. Look at this. And now we're up. Okay. Well, there's the structure situation. <laughs> yeah. Now, looking around that corner, we don't know what's over there. There might be another creek channel over there. Look at this at 17 feet. Right down in the channel again. Yeah. There might be another creek arm over there. There may be breaks on the other side of that point, too, okay? Okay. Uh, away with the 500. Right away with the 500. Now we're going down the one bar, then we're going to go in into the creek channel area, then come out the other side? Yeah, you can see what we're doing. It just dropped from about four feet down into a hole along here, okay? Mm-hmm. Following the creek channel all the way back. Drop down to 10, now it's going to come up again. Okay. Of these and stuff, we might not be able to get all, get the, all the way in there, yeah. Okay. Do the best we can. On the one side, and then you're going to fish each side right, separately. I'm going to fish this side, then I'll go over and fish, fish that, that side. Separately. Well, because I'd be running across and wasting too much time. Oh, okay. Wasting too much time. I'd be in too much unproductive water. This way, I can give a good look at this one and then go right to the next one. All right. On the end of the bar there, the yeah, contour. I'm going to cut it too short or the lures will be up on the shore. Okay. I'm going to come down this little bit of riprap down here. See if I can get in close enough. I know I can get in close enough at the point, huh? Okay, so you're fishing basically each bar at the creek channel separately. Right. Good. That's very possible. So you're running right up against this riprap here. I'm running right up against it. I'm tipping it every once in a while. I'm going to go to the 400. You say this is a, a little more of a classic bar? This is like the classic bar. You can see the point of land. The structure follows the shape of that. Comes straight up. Okay. Straight up and drops right in the channel. The other one was a little more subtle and uh, with the hump. A little hump more and... subtle and it's got a hump and then it swings way out. A little longer. With another hump out there a little bit further. And it gets pretty brushy as you get out there, as you can see. Okay, yeah. Contouring, just going Pretty around the... Contouring it with the 500 and the 400, and I'll do the same thing with the 250. Going around the end of the bar. Right around the end of it. Now, what we missed when we made that turn, we'll hit it when we come back up here again, this On way. The second pass with this? Right. Okay. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to come across it again. I know I can't follow the shoreline. I can't even contour it. They got me out too deep with all the piers and everything. So I'm just going to cut across and pick up that other one. And we'll proceed to check that with a 400. Then we'll put on a 250. Cut across the, the channel? Yeah. OK. One about five feet this time. So you're basically hitting just the tips of the bars now because all the, the tips. Yeah, I can't get up down the You can't get on the side very well. So can't get down the sides because all the piers. And OK. Just covering the areas you can cover. If I was catching a lot of fish here, I might have to cast those piers. Okay. You know. Yeah. Okay, so you're gonna you're gonna make a pass down the side to uh, not waste time. Just go straight back exactly. the way you went. You came straight from. Back the way I came from. Okay. I'll just be out a little further. Okay. Then they'll like cover the other side. Finder is a guide. I don't need really to really pick up a line sight there because I want the lure to bump. That's another thing. Everybody worries about. The depth finding. They follow this thing and they're steering, and then the lure never hits the bottom. Yeah. So you gotta concentrate That's on the lure. So you're not going deeper in there. You're just gonna keep working this, the end that you can fish correctly. Keep it, then I'm gonna go down that side. So then the number of passes uh, isn't really set. It depends on the what the structure. Number of passes is determined on the structure situation. Okay. Yeah. 
jet skiers, beers, you know. Yeah, right, what what you can do. In this modern day and age, what I can do will depend on it. Get up as fast as I can in case there's a fish followed down the structure. So at the end of the passes, you often will catch a fish or sometimes often. will? Often. Because uh, you let the lure sink, maybe. Let it sink, and even if I didn't, even if I was bumping and coming off, and the boat's in 35 feet of water. Yeah. This is where you hear these geniuses tell you they're catching suspended fish. The fish chased the lure right off the structure. Okay. And you kept reeling, and you know, really and you caught him. Because <laughs> you reeled real fast. Yeah. Okay. Caught him. Yeah, we're not that far away from there. Okay, so this pass, the last pass, you didn't feel was quite... I didn't feel like I hit it good enough. Okay, so now you're just it now. making another one. Yeah, we're gonna get at it now. Feet. Okay. okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this marker in about eight feet of water. Mm -hmm. Now it's a simple uh, thing for us to make passes with the 200s and the 100s, and if we want it to a 700, to make them outside this marker without ever making a mistake. So that guides you That's in your I mean. deeper passes. You're I'm going to put to it. Use this as a reference. That's all. On the tip of the bar. Well, I won't put it on the tip of the bar. The tip of the bar is way out here where it drops in the channel. I'm putting it on top of the bar. I checked everything out to a depth of about seven, eight feet. Okay. Feet on the top right there, 10 feet on the top. So what I want to do is swing way in here, ways. But put it on the tip of the eight foot uh, right depth? Right about seven feet, yeah, yeah, seven, eight feet. Coming at it again. That's good enough right there. Now if I can see it with this water color, I'll be looking. Yeah, great. Right. That marker is deeper, right? Everything outside is deeper, yep. I right know. Now we're going to put on a 200. Or I have marker, that's all. Okay. Okay. Go ahead, let's your line. Here's guys, then they cut in. Mm -hmm. There's our marker right there. Marker. See? Oh, I see. So you're using the marker. 17, 16. For your straight up line. now, look at it. Yeah. Well. So you can 11. make it. You see what I mean? Yeah, there's the marker right over there. You're going to go over to the other point, and because the marker has been placed already there, the, the one they sure. they marked it with. I don't need to throw one over you don't there. Need to throw one. I've had a chance to look at it already. I know how deep it is there. Yeah. I'm coming out of 35 feet right here. So you, with this uh, 200, you're going to just hit both? Right. I'm coming up right now. Okay. Press it now. It looks like it's going to come up just right for us. Just using that marker as a reference, that's all. Okay. One, and you're coming yeah, at a little different angle. Different angle. See, I'm in 28, 29 feet of water. So each pass, you kind of change, make it uh, a different it a approach. Bit. Okay. Coming by the marker. How deep is that marker in? Probably about six, seven feet. Six, seven feet. We're nine and a half feet right now. We should okay. start bumping some. This and finger. It goes right in this creek channel. Finger on the side. See it? Oh, yeah. And it drops right off in the creek channel. I'm going to be able to hit it. So you're hitting just that finger as you come around so the I'm end hitting. of the bar. Then you're making a, then continuing that pass to hit the, the finger on the right side. Now. Okay, I can feel it. Now it's dropping off right into that channel. Just stay where you're hitting the tip of that bar. Here it comes. And it's okay. going to go right into the channel. Make your pass on this second bar now. Here it comes. Now you're coming up on your marker that you threw. Yep, we're going to hit it. On it right now. There it is. Oh, yeah, I'm feeling it. It is. Shit. You're still running all right? Yep. Yeah, I'm running good. So you aren't uh, easy on snags. You really oh, rip them. I'm em. tough on them. You're <laughs> tough on them. You get them out. A lot of people get discouraged from fishing these kind of lakes because of this. Yeah. Stuff. So you rip right you through them. you got to do it. you got to do it. 100, but you noticed that there was a light condition change? Yeah, the light conditions changed considerably. Looks like it, uh, yeah, it's gotten a little cloudy or a little darker. Yeah, it is. So you're going to change color. Yeah. You got a, a particular color that you 
He wants to take it uh, copper. Copper, okay. So would you call that a, a neutral color? It's a neutral. Oh, okay. I kept thinking it was a bright color. No, chartreuse is neutral. Is a neutral. Chartreuse and yellow are neutral. So is copper. Brass. Brass, okay. I'm thinking about it. Where we have this marker, if we were to hook a big bass, we got this marker to use for a reference mark. Mm-hmm. It'd be real easy for us to get in the casting position here. Okay. Can tell us quite a bit. Because, I'll... because we have we have a, a marker out. Okay? Mm -hmm. We did what we're supposed to do. I notice you're using these uh, the line lengths pretty much the same all the way through all these yeah, uh, sizes. Yeah, because I'm getting the depths I'm looking for. It's not and too windy or wavy or anything. That makes it a lot simpler, too. It makes it a lot easier. But take them out. We'll cast some of these spots tomorrow. Okay. We're mapping them and fishing them pretty hard today, and like I did yesterday with the kids. And, uh, so today we're just mapping and uh, we're mapping and looking around. Looking around. Jason's first day on the lake and my second. Okay. So we know we're going to be back tomorrow. Why should we be in so a hurry? We can cast tomorrow. Not by the five pack. Okay. Mm -hmm. Run right through the five pack, all the way down to the 100, and didn't catch a fish. Well, when we map this structure, what's the situation? Did we hit the drop off with a 100? Mm -mm. Back there we did. Yeah. Okay, different bar over here. Ah. We're getting closer to the, to, to the uh, uh, we're going toward the headwaters, but the lake is opening up. There could be a school of fish moving right here, and we went, we might miss them. Because we went through the five pack, we did everything the book says, and it didn't work for us. Mm -hmm. Okay? So now maybe it's time to drag night crawlers through there. <laughs> All right? Uh, and we catch a couple of bluegills, and we say, see, we wouldn't have caught that if we didn't drag the nightcrawler harness through there, you know? Yeah. What really happened here is, here's our marker, okay? When we go out here, we go out from where I threw the marker, we mapped this before. We see it drops down to 10 feet here. And we see at 17 feet, it drops off in the channel. Oh, so we haven't even fished down there. We haven't even fished a drop off yet. Yeah. But we could be moving on by and saying we're doing everything right. We're not doing everything right. We didn't hit the drop off yet. We uh, didn't interpret the structure properly if we were to leave right now. Yeah, right. Okay? Okay. This is where the problems come in. Now, let's say you got lucky. And on a 200 or 100, you hit a big bass up on a structure near a bush or something. Mm -hmm. Okay? So he anchored the boat and he started casting, lo and behold, there they are. Well, they're sitting at the 17-foot break line. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't realize that, because he didn't map it right. Right. It's didn't the interpretation. Okay. That bar over there that we fished, we could hit that bar and hit the drop-off with a 100. This one, that's So the drop-off so. on the other one was at 12 feet. Exactly. And we hit this it. This one is not so. Wow. We're still on the bar. OK, good. Yeah, OK, so you. We'll dig a few out now. We better take out a, a neutral. So we're going deeper with a 700 and 800? We're going to go, well, we'll, we'll 700, 700 we at least. Be able to reach it. Okay. Right. This, so this is your spoon plug box, and you have just a couple oh, yeah. uh, couple little yeah. uh, boxes like this here with some jump lures in them. Exactly. Okay. To the water, Yeah. we're going to run the next color to the reel. With the 700, so right. we're going three colors. To make sure that we get the depth. To the reel, okay. okay. Besides that, it, being thorough, We've only fished two structures here. Yeah, two structures, and part of that part one, of that we're one. gonna hit that with a 100 when we leave here. But we're gonna have to cover it thoroughly before we go to the next one. Exactly. And we know that everything inside of that marker is shallower than what we're fishing. We're not running up in there and, you know. That marker makes it so much easier if we so get a fish. So much easier, so much easier. To just know exactly where to stop and cast. So much easier. Yeah. That and a little bit of a line sight. Okay. Should be coming up on there. Bouncing now. For the light condition, you know, so yeah. with a copper on. Could be that that's what they could see the best. Okay. Now this bar that we've just been fishing, this is one that Buck has had a This is bar Buck's been in a school, yeah. In a school. Twice, I think, on this bar. 
Okay. Now, he never got into school on that second one, but I like that second one, too. So you're going to check that out, too? Yeah, we'll make a pass across. We're going to pick up our marker now. Okay. We would see this projection sticking out here. We'd see this finger, mm -hmm. OK? We know the structure situation. We'd immediately anchor on it, almost right where we had our marker out in the first place. Ah, OK. But That's the, the second marker, of course, would be just that, a second marker. Mm -hmm. That's how you find that school of bass. All right. As soon as my lure came off, that's right. You turn a sharp turn, and you're, you're going to hit see the, what's going to happen here. The tip of the bar now, the too. The reason I know that's like that is because I mapped it. Okay, so you already know it. Okay. Three passes with this 100 on that second bar, just to check it out. Right. One on each side, and then one across the tip. Right. We came across the tip that time. We came down the other side. Now we're going to come up this side. Aren't we? And that's uh, just to check it at the uh, 14, 15 foot level? Yeah, 13 to 15. Th 13 feet. to 15? Okay. It breaks around 12, 13 feet. Okay. And whereas in the other bar we worked, it was 17. We're in 40 feet of water here, and we could, we could almost cast and hit the shoreline. Ah. Okay, you're, so you're saying we're trying. You're going to come up on the side. On the side of it, because the channel is over on that side. On the end of it, it, it goes out quite a ways. Right. Any fish that are living in that creek channel over there will come up on the other side of it. Ah, okay. Do you like this area on the other side of this bar we just fished? I like fished? this on this side for this one rather than on that side for this one. Okay. And I like that other one too. Okay. This one goes in the creek channel on this side, okay? So this one with the marker there is, uh, we're going to fish that and into the creek channel? Yeah, we're going to fish right down the line here. Okay. We can hit the break line with a 100 as we did before. Now your reasons for liking this uh, are? The 40 foot creek channel. 40 foot there. creek channel there. Okay. 100, now how far back into that creek channel are you going to go? Just a little ways. I'm not going to go the whole thing. Anything that relates to this structure. It's going to probably be out on this end where they're coming up. I, oh, definitely. Okay. Yeah, there's a good long finger sticking out over there. 400 and go back down now, the side there. there. We're basically fishing that little point, uh, that little finger off of that side, the one aren't that we? sticks out the side that goes into that 40 feet of water, yeah. Okay, so just kind of stick on this side and, and fish it. Right on. So we're probably going to be a little quicker doing this one than one of the other work. Yeah, we way will out. be because there's less area involved Fishing both here sides and everything. Worry about, you okay. Know. And to the point and there? Small fish on, right there on the 400. Ripped right. off. So are you going to uh, just kind of make turn around or well, we'll make a finish pass. pass? We'll finish the pass. We'll okay. make a pass back. Let's see what's That's going on. That's kind of shallow. He's going by that. But you met. Oh, I see. Okay. But you made a note that that area we got to check it over a more. small fish. Okay. Probably a bass because he hit it pretty hard. As they follow that Peter Creek on in, they could easily be up in here too. There could be some. Even farther in, yeah. We just give this a little check. Now, in what situation would you go right to the cast, say you hit a fish and it came off? Well, usually if I hit him a little bit deeper, I'd have to see him first. Oh, okay. And this was a small fish? Yeah, if it was a, an area I knew, you know, I, I have no idea what it was. Even, you know. If it was a real a good size fish, would you stop and cast? Well, this is a 400. I'd probably keep going. To, I know where the spot is at now, though. I see the finger sticking out, you know, oh. so I could anchor and cast it. Okay. That fish was right up on top here, right where we're coming through right now. Okay. He was sitting right on the top. You come off, your lures come off, and you, you hesitate about uh, 15 seconds or more and keep going after your lure runs free. Okay, so there's a fish chasing it. Ah. Sometimes there's a fish chasing it, so I come off into the deep water all the time, okay? Yeah. I see where, where I can do that, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I come off into the deep water, and so I give him a chance to catch it in case he saw it late. So you wait, what, about 15, uh, 30 seconds as, and keep the pass going straight? Yeah, I just keep going. I, I bump and I come off, and I know I'm a few yards off the bar. Okay. Note of the speed that you you hook that fish on and Yeah, and I've got alter. the, uh, I've got the uh, speed control on right now. 
we bump it at about uh, two miles an hour. Uh huh. And I'm running about uh, three three point four right now. Would you say you you lost that fish? Could it be that you were going too fast and you'd want to slow no, down a little? He just ripped off. He just ripped off. Okay. He just wasn't hooked for me. He hit it at a pretty fast turn. Yeah. The dam. Uh huh. The watercolor's still good. But it's not quite as dark as it is below the bridge, just like Buck told us. And uh, so that looks like the further we go toward the dam, the more moss we're going to pick up. So we're going to go back the other way and fish those areas I mapped yesterday. Stay away from the moss areas. Stay away from the moss areas, because why, why should we limit ourselves to areas where we can't work the bottom? Yeah, well? right. Picking up a little more moss as we get toward that dam. As the water gets clearer, it'll be warm moss. Warm moss. Oh, creek line, right? And you notice that, uh, you notice that it's getting rushier as we go this way, too? Yeah. Everything points to going back the other way. <laughs> so as we go down towards the dam, it's getting more brush, too? Yeah, we're getting a little more brush. Not bad, mm -hmm. you know, a little bit more. Now on this noticeable amount. on this stump that that we found uh, that uh, that wouldn't be anything to think about as a break, would it? Well, it's a break on the structure. Yeah, but it's up on top of the bar. It's not right at the drop off. Okay. But it's on top of the bar. It's like a rock pile or anything else. Yeah. Unless there's something leading to it, then we wouldn't right. pay much attention to it. But it's it's in a good spot. Okay. 56. Uh huh. Compared to over there, it was 58, almost 60. You know. Could have something to do with it too. Oh, okay. Something to take into consideration. Take into consideration. The water's so. getting colder as we're going towards the dam. Yeah. Every time you start going towards the clear water, here comes the bushes. Here comes the the uh, clear water. Here comes the moss. <laughs> the colder temperatures and everything. Yeah. So that this season, uh, the early season like this. Uh, you don't want to fish the, the coldest water anyway, do you? No, no, you're looking for a little better water, more active fish. Right? Okay. Okay, we're making a quick check on this first uh, structure we worked? Yeah, we're just going to check it real quick. What size are we use? What's going on? we got a 250 on right now. We're going to hit it around seven feet. I tried running it free across it just to see what would happen. Is that where the first break line is, the seven foot? Yeah, it's about about six, seven feet. Okay. Now, now we're going to come on that hump that's over here. Okay. So this is just what you might do as you're going back checking other structures? That's what I'm going to do. I just want to check it on my way back. Okay. You're 250. If you don't get anything, you're going to move on. Yeah, I don't get anything. I'm just going to move on. Because we've been on this thing once already today. Okay. That's a tree. Now this is the spot on the other side of the bridge? Right. And this is the spot. This is the spot that we just came off of. That's by the boat dock, right here. Okay. Okay, and there's another spot right over there, off that point over there, where you see those houses back in there. Mm-hmm. Now, where's the creek channel that we... Well, this line running through here. This line running through there, okay. But then there was a, a side feeder creek that we fished, and that's right well, there? That was over here. Oh, okay. That was that right there, did you see? Yeah. Okay. okay. Good. And then straight across, there's something on that side. But coming back, we'll hit this and this. We'll stay on this side and come across the little river creek arm right here. Okay. And then we'll fish this big bar right here. Fish the big bar That's there. That's where we're going right Okay. There. That's a little arm that you'd investigate? Yeah, I'd investigate that. Okay. You'd run it, start it with 500s and... Well, I'd, I'd map it far as to see what's there, you know. Okay. Look there. <laughs> yeah, those are... Those are really good. Really good. Look at the size of those homes. I bet they didn't look, it didn't look like this when Buck first fished this lake. Oh, well, they did. <laughs> this is where the river comes in? A little... This is where the little river comes in. This is a creek arm. A creek arm. One of the major creek arms on the lake. Okay. This is what place that uh, you're going to be fishing? Okay. Yeah, Marker Blue's Yeah. Yeah, this 
So you're just gonna you're looking it over a little bit now to get up yeah, here. I looked it over yesterday. Look at that, right down in the channel. Oh yeah. There's where you sit, right there in the gas this way. <laughs> yeah. It's sounds, that simple. Sounds you know good. I mean? It's that simple. <laughs> okay. Chase, okay. And then we'll fish the other one too. For here too, see. This is the other side That's of that. A good one. Okay. Okay. And this is a steep. Finger sticking out this way. Okay. okay. This is a fairly steep shore. Yeah, fairly steep. Sticking out along Finger. here. Now you say you're coming up to a big bar. Is this like what they call a wide sweeping bar? Yeah, this will be a big bar that drops right off in the channel. So this, you're, this is as far as we went yesterday, Dawn and I. Okay. So you're going to look for fingers that might go towards the deepest water. Yeah, uh, and that's what it'll be. It'll drop right in the channel over there. Broke one off here, so we're gonna tie another. We're gonna tie another one in. Without glasses, we're gonna do it. Without glasses, that's pretty good. <laughs> Are you using a clinch knot? A clinch knot. Okay. 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 You use an old spoon plug to kind of grip a hold of? Yeah. When you when you don't have no more feeling left in your fingers, this works pretty good. <laughs> It ties a pretty nice knot, as you can see. Oh, yeah. Okay. And because it's no bow and it's not regular amount of filament, I kind of grab it with a pair of pliers and pull that thing tight. You grab the other end, yeah. Yeah. And you could see we didn't even break at our knot. There's the knot. Okay. Let's take a look at it. Yeah. We didn't even break at our knot. We broke. Uh, Further up the line where we had a weak spot. Okay. Up by the color. So you pull the, the loose end and you cut you clip it. Right. Okay. Now we're all set. That old spoon plug doesn't have any hooks on it, so you don't it's hurt yourself. <laughs> Makes a lot of sense. It's all done. It? So we're starting to fish the uh, big bar now. We're going to fish the big bar now, yeah. And this is the. Uh, it's on a large turn in the reservoir. Yeah, it's where the river makes the turn. Okay. We're starting with a, a 250. 250. We can't really get in there with a, with a 500. With all, all the here. docks. Okay. So we're going to, it's pretty damn deep. We can't even get in there with a 400. Okay. Until we get out here toward the end. Okay. And this is the wide turn. You think maybe a storm is coming? Well, I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. Watch it. predict any. What do you note in the weather? Is there anything? Well, that wind is coming, and I see some dark-looking stuff back there. Dark blue, but... Okay. Probably a stick. Let's see, whereabouts? Right here. Okay. Yeah. What is that? When you're, people can't understand that. The, how to contour troll? How to contour troll. What do you mean pull the lure off? Let the lure start bumping the bottom and slowly turn the boat out until the lure runs free. Then slowly turn the boat back in. Now we're going to run free. Uh huh. Bumping the bottom now. I'm not going to turn toward the shore because i got to hang. <laughs> so you don't turn towards the shore until shore. So the lure runs free. Even if the lure starts to bump, you start to turn the boat out. Yeah, it's it's best uh, not to look at that depth sounder then, right? Look at that depth sounder. The boat's going where you want to go, but the lure isn't. Yeah. This lure is coming off of spots. It's dropping from 7 to 12, 7 to 15, and then coming back up again. Well, this bar goes from this uh, boat ramp all the way around to the other side. Right here, and then there's a little channel in there, and then it comes up again in front of that boat ramp. Oh. From this marker to the boat ramp. Okay. And you're just 
You're covering it now. Uh, yeah, well, the 250. 250. We're going to put a 200 on now. Yeah. Okay. Is that something that you uh, make no, note of I birds? No, I don't pay or? much attention to the ducks. Not the ducks, but seagulls you might. Yeah, yeah. If it was time for the white bass to be schooling on the surface or something like that. Animal okay. Spiders, you know. not, certainly not as important as structure, though, right? No, it's not. <laughs> Past you're just ticking the, the ends of these uh, right on top of fingers or bars. Yeah, we're not out to the drop off yet. Just, okay. Just you know what I mean? Just right on top of it. Just get right on top of these fingers. Kind of a straight line pass. Well, you can see just about straight. Yeah, right across the, both of them. Starting to tick the other one now? Yep. There's the marker there for it. Okay. Jigging worm fishermen like these guys were that we dug off the bottom here. We take a look at this lake, the size of it, Yeah. until we locate the fish and determine that a jump type lure is, is necessary to make a catch. Where are we going to throw these things? Yeah, they may Look work. Look how wide but... they are. They only cover this much water. Yeah, that's right. Where the heck are we going to throw them? So we've got to do our mapping and interpretation we've got to first. Do our mapping, and we've got to use the free running bottom bumping lures trolling to, to locate the fish and find the productive structures and that that will determine when we cast, where we anchor the boat, and what we have to use on the cast to catch them with. But right. only after we find the fish. Trolling's our teacher. You say sometimes you just hit these points uh, with these shallow lures and you'll pick yeah. up scattered fish? Let's see this this time of the year. So you you uh cover a lot of territory when you cover do that. Cover a lot of territory, yeah. And hit a lot of short points. Doesn't work too often. Is this a backhouse cove? I think so. Okay. That the Bucks talked about. Looks like a good one. Now what, what are the criteria? Say you say it's a good bar or, or one that you probably wouldn't fish. What are the criteria you use? Well, it's got to have some deep water, and I'd like it to be near the channel if possible. Especially this time of year. Well, any or any time. Okay. Any time of year. And some of this cold hopping and stuff like that, these fish are—they're uh, not too dependable. Uh -huh. Sometimes they're all you can catch. Now, in this reservoir, is, if most of the wood, has that rotted away? It's most a, of it is rotten. It's a fairly old reservoir, isn't it? Yeah, real old. Most of the wood is, is rotten, but the fresh stuff is the stuff that falls in. Was this clear cut originally, or was it? Yeah, they cut it. They did cut it. They cut it, yeah. Okay. This old stuff that got washed in, you know. There's a riprap bank right here. Oh, yeah. This is one of the bars that Buck was talking about here? Yeah, he says this is a pretty good one. Okay. You can see why. It's got all the rocks, channel coming out here. This is a feeder stream, 40 feet of water. Ah, okay. Then there's this other side is over here. And the brakes are on the side. You can see this lake right now. We're learning the a lot. Fingers are reaching out to the side. Okay. Yeah, I was coming off of yeah, that. I got down too. So as you're uh, using the contour trolling around this, you're making a note of where the brake lines are. Right. They could move from that point up against the riprap here. Against here, yeah, they could be up against here. Do you pay any attention to the potential spawning areas? Oh yeah, this would be a potential spawning area right here, perhaps. Right on the riprap? Yeah, right against it. There's got to be open spots in those rocks. Mostly what we're looking for here is pre-spawn fish. Pre-spawn, okay. Yeah, they're not ready to spawn yet. The okay. water's not warm. So this is a little steeper side, probably something to... Yeah, well, it's got a good fire on it, too. Okay. Fish. 